The BFG, Chapter 2. Who? It wasn't a human. It couldn't be. It was four times as tall as the tallest human. It was so tall its head was higher than the upstairs windows of the houses. Sophie opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Her throat, like her whole body, was frozen with fright. This was the witching hour, all right. The tall black figure was coming her way. It was keeping very close to the houses across the street, hiding in the shadowy places where there was no moonlight. On and on it came, nearer and nearer, but it was moving in spurts. It would stop, then it would move on, then it would stop again. But what on earth was it doing? Aha! Sophie could see now what it was up to. It was stopping in front of each house. It would stop and peer into the upstairs window of each house in the street. It actually had to bend down to peer into the upstairs windows. That's how tall it was. It would stop and peer in. Then it would slide on to the next house and stop again, and peer in, and so on all along the street. It was much closer now, and Sophie could see it more clearly. Looking at it carefully, she decided it had to be some kind of person. Obviously, it was not a human, but it was definitely a person. A giant person, perhaps. Sophie stared hard across the misty, moonlit street. The giant, if it was what he was, was wearing a long black cloak. In one hand, he was holding what looked like a very long, thin trumpet. In the other hand, he held a large suitcase. The giant had stopped now, right in front of Mr. and Mrs. Gucci's house. The Gucci's had a green grocer's shop in the middle of, high, of the high street, and the family lived above the shop. The two Gucci children slept in the upstairs front room. Sophie knew that. The giant was peering through the window into the room where Michael and Jane Gucci were sleeping. From across the street, Sophie watched and held her breath. She saw the giant step back a pace and put the suitcase down on the pavement. He bent over and opened the suitcase. He took something out of it. It looked like a glass jar, one of those square ones with a screw top. He unscrewed the top of the jar and poured what was in it into the end of the long trumpet thing. Sophie watched, trembling. She saw the giant straighten up again, and she saw him poke the trumpet in through the open upstairs window of the room where the Gucci children were sleeping. She saw the giant take a deep breath, and woof, he blew through the trumpet. No noise came out, but it was obvious to Sophie that whatever had been in the jar had now been blown through the trumpet into the Gucci children's bedroom. What could it be? As the giant withdrew the trumpet from the window and bent down to pick up the suitcase, he happened to turn his head and glance across the street. In the moonlight, Sophie caught a glimpse of an enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face with the most enormous ears. The nose was as sharp as a knife, and above the nose... There were two bright flashing eyes, and the eyes were staring straight at Sophie. There was a fierce and devilish look about them. Sophie gave a yelp and pulled back from the window. She flew across the dormitory and jumped into her bed and hid under the blanket. And there she crouched, still as a mouse, and tingling all over.